We're joined in studio by Celeste Fokonia, Africa analyst at RMB. I was talking about your outlook. Yes. Well, everybody's <laughs> expecting the MPC decision is not out yet, but why do you expect it to stay to remain where it is? Well, like the market, we're expecting it to remain unchanged at 10.25 percent, mainly because inflation is remaining stable. The the Kwanzaa, uh, the local currency is remaining stable, and it's also being uh, inflation is also being helped by lower oil prices. Yes. Then, of course, the strong domestic demand that we are seeing in the market is keeping inflation in double digits. So we actually don't see the MPC making any change to their rate at the moment. But the inflation target for the government has is 10 percent. Can they get that? Can they get there? Well, we believe they will be very close to uh, achieving that this year. Yes. Our expectation is 10.7 percent. Unfortunately, demand is still dr driving inflation. Angola imports about 70 to 80 percent of all their goods in the market. And they're also very sensitive, surprisingly enough, to oil prices. Even yes. though they're a net exporter, mm -hmm. they're also a net importer of refined goods. So we found that they are mo the most sensitive out of the countries that we cover to a change in oil prices. So that's why we expect inflation to remain in double digits this year. And just about the goods, there are serious logistical issues about getting those goods to consumers, and many of them sometimes do not even get there. And that's what's keeping the prices elevated. Right. Just to get the goods from the ports into the rural areas are specifically also a problem in, in Angola because of the major infrastructure deficit that we're seeing there. We are expecting the government to increase their infrastructure spending in the next few years over the medium term. However, that is also what is keeping prices high. Let's talk about the GDP. Your projection is about 10%, the oil and gas sector being a key driver for that. Yes, we have a high expectation of 10% this year in 2012 and then going settling into 7% in 2013. Right. Major driver, as you said, the oil and gas sector. But what is the major risk to our outlook at the moment is the drop in the oil prices. Why are we seeing um, those major risks is because demand is subsiding. We see supply also of production of oil increasing quite significantly. And then we also see that the stronger dollar is keeping the oil prices lower. So that is the major risk to our 10 percent outlook. Right. Um, however, um, that is uh, the major risk that we would highlight. What is the likely impact or whatever the non-oil sector is bringing in here? About 55 percent of GDP now coming from the non-oil sector. That's true. It was about 45 percent a year ago, yes. uh, or rather in 2008. And um, that is specifically driven by the construction sector. And that is because we see a strong investment into infrastructure specifically surrounding the resources sector. But then we also can see agriculture is uh, becoming a strong driver of GDP growth. Yes. About 7% growth rates we expect in the agricultural sector over the next few years because of strong investment. But we must remember it's a far cry from what the agriculture sector used to be in Angola before the Civil War. The August 31 parliamentary election, is that likely to have any serious um, change in the economic policy? Not at all. Uh, we know exactly who's going to win. It yes. is a, it's a parliamentary election um, and the voters are voting for the party, not for the president. Yes. Of course, President Dos Santos is the number one on the, the ruling party list, so we expect him to become president. Um, but what, of course, is important to note now is that the, the risks surrounding the succession race after Dos Santos will not be president anymore, right. and those risks have subsided because the number, number second on the list is now Manuel Vincente. So there's, there's some sense of who's going to be the successor after President Dos Santos leaves uh, the presidential seat. And touch on this, you might have already alluded to it. You expect the budget to remain in surplus. Yes, Why uh, so? quite a strong surplus. From last year, it was about 7% surplus. We expect it to drop to about 5%, mainly driven by strong oil prices during the past year. Right. Um, but why we're seeing a drop in the surplus is because of the elections towards the end of the year. There's always election spending sure, higher yes. than usual. So that's why we see the surplus dropping. However, the main risk that I want to highlight with the fiscal policy is, yes. of course, a drop in the oil prices. What could be a good buffering for Angola is that they're quite conservative in their budget. Uh, their budgeted assumption for oil prices is about 77 US dollars per barrel, where it's currently sitting just below um, 100. So uh, quite a conservative budget price there. I think we have just an, a few seconds to talk about the currency, which you say you should be expecting a bit of headwinds in the second half of the year. Yes, it's a lot of domestic demand for, for dollars that we are seeing is constraining liquidity in the market. Right. However, the strong investment that we see in, in, in this, uh, specifically the oil sector and also the, the main reserves that the uh, economy has, uh, we see the, the government buffering the, the unit to be remain stable at around 95 uh, Kwanzaa per the US dollar by the end of the year. All right, we'll leave it there. Celeste, many thanks for coming and, uh, and speaking to us about these things. Thank you.